He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to the adult Sunday school lesson for New Bethel Baptist Church for April 4th, uh, Resurrection Sunday. Our lesson today is entitled Resurrected. Jesus is the resurrected Savior and Lord. Our lesson today comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Have you ever been or ever anticipated something only to have your hopes dashed? Then maybe something better happened. Well, I've been in that kind of situation and I suppose you have too. Or maybe um, you were told something that would happen and when it did, you were surprised. Maybe you prayed for something and then we're surprised when God answered the prayer. Well, really, those are kind of the things that we're going to be looking at in our lesson today. I want to give you some background, but a lot of this is just some verses uh, that uh, help us to understand what happened prior to the beginning of our lesson today. So these were the verses that are just prior to where our lesson takes place. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshiped God and said, surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd came to see the crucifixion, saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with the decision and the actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation, as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the women from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where his body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. But by the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun. So they, were, so they rested as required by the law. Well, that gives us a little background to what is taking place here in our lesson. There's a Roman centurion. Uh, he recognized the injustice that was being done in the crucifixion of Jesus. It even says in that passage of scripture that he praised God or worshiped God. The observers for the crucifixion, those that came to observe the crucifixion, went home and went home in deep sorrow. I think many of them had been the ones that had followed Jesus or were looking for him to be their Messiah. The Galilean friends, the people that are friends of Jesus that had followed him around, they came down from Galilee. They're in Jerusalem now. And these friends were uh, also included some women that observed all these things from a distance. Now they bring up the name of a man here that uh, we don't hear a lot about in scripture. His name is Joseph. He's from the town of Arimathea. And uh, he was part of the Sanhedrin or the ruling council of the Jewish leaders, religious leaders. And he objected to the crucifixion of Jesus. He was a follower of Jesus though secretly, and we read about that in John chapter 19, verse 38. 
he and Nicodemus, the man that had come to Jesus in the John chapter 3, he came by night, remember, to uh, question Jesus. He was also a secret follower of Jesus. They together took the body of Jesus off the cross and uh, placed it in a tomb, in a new tomb. They had requested permission from Pilate and got permission to do that. This happened probably on Friday prior to the Sabbath. The women watched. Uh, they, they were at a distance, but they were watching and they saw where the body had been placed. Then they went home to prepare spices. And then it says that the Sabbath came and they had to rest on the Sabbath. So they weren't allowed to go to the tomb to put the spices on the body. Now that brings us to our lesson for today. We begin in verse 1 of Luke 24. The title of this section is Return. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. The disciples left before Joseph took the body of Jesus off the cross. They were gone already. But the women hung around and they watched from a distance. And they knew where the tomb was that uh, Joseph and Nicodemus had put the body of Jesus. Now, I don't know how long they stayed. They stayed long enough to know where the tomb was. Uh, they knew about the stone that would be placed in front of the door of the tomb. They may not have known about the soldiers that were placed there to guard the tomb. They went home and they rested on the Sabbath. And then on Sunday morning, very early, before it was even light, it was dark yet when they left home, they uh, headed to the tomb to put these spices on the body of Jesus. Now, there are some that think there may have been two Sabbath days uh, due to the Passover coming, which would have placed the crucifixion of Jesus on Thursday. And there's also a, a, another part of or a group of believers that believe that this happened on Friday. This we traditionally uh, see Friday as the day of uh, Good Friday, the day that Christ died on the cross. Uh, there is a, a, a part of uh, Jewish custom that seems to indicate that a part of a day would be considered as a whole day. And so because the body of Jesus was taken off the cross prior to sundown on Friday and put into the tomb, that would have been considered one day. Saturday would have been the second day. Sunday would be the third day. So those are a couple different uh, perspectives or uh, views about how this all may have happened. Now, the translation I read from earlier said it was on Friday. Um, uh, that's taking into consider consideration this latter view that there would have been, it would have, was on Friday. Uh, I don't think the uh, original states that, or there wouldn't be this debate that has gone on for many, many years. The primary point here is that uh, Jesus was raised on Sunday. Uh, that became the Lord's Day for the early church. They considered Sunday as the Lord's Day. Um, we read about that in Scripture um, in Acts 20, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2. It talks about how the church came together on the first day of the week, and Revelation 1.10 talks about it being the, that being the Lord's Day. The... Um, 
women went to the tomb very early in the morning while it was still dark. They went to the tomb. The um, passage in John chapter 20 clarifies that, that it was still dark. The Sabbath ended on Saturday night at sundown. Well, then it would have been too dark for them to go to uh, the tomb. It wouldn't have been safe for them to go. And so they waited until early Sunday morning. When they went to the tomb, they brought the funeral spices. They put spices on the body. Um, and um, they, it, it, it says that they took these spices. I, I'm assuming that they probably didn't know that Nicodemus had brought spices. In John 19, verse 39, we read that Nicodemus brought 75 pounds of spices uh, to put on the body of Jesus. And so he had already prepared the body for burial. Uh, I think the fact that the ladies are coming with these spices just demonstrates their love for Jesus. The fact that they had a great admiration for him. In verse 2, we read, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But they, when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now we know from uh, Mark chapter 16, another parallel passage to this uh, passage we're looking at, that they had discussed the difficulty of moving the stone. They talked together about that, that how were they going to do that? How were they going to get the stone moved from the entrance of the tomb? Uh, they knew nothing, though, about the soldiers, evidently, at least it's not uh, stated in any way in the uh, in the various passages of scripture that cover the resurrection of Jesus. They evidently didn't know that there were soldiers placed at the tomb to guard the tomb. Um, they probably didn't know about the earthquake that happened that morning or about the angel rolling back the stone so that they could enter to see that the body of Jesus was gone. While they were wondering about this, verse 4, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their, with their faces to the ground. Where it says they were wondering about this. Another translation says they were perplexed about this. I think that's talking about the fact that the body of Jesus was gone. It's not there. Then two men in gleaming clothes appear, which we know to be angels. These angels appeared uh, to the women. The angelic appearances uh, of these two men uh, frightened the women. And they bowed down in respect and awe uh, before these uh, angels. And that seems to be a very common uh, response to people seeing angels throughout Scripture. That brings us to the second part of our lesson. It is entitled, Remember, verses 5 and through 7. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? How often do we look in the wrong place for things? People look to the world for security. They look to the world for joy and, and self-fulfillment instead of looking to God. We read in Galatians about the fruit of the Spirit, which really is the result of allowing God to be in control of our life. We allow God to be in control of our life. He will produce within us love joy, peace, and patience, and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Aren't those things that people look to the world for? God says, look to me, I will give those things to you. The angels 
that appeared to the women, they had something better to offer than a body, a dead body in a tomb. They had the news that he is risen, he's alive. That was wonderful news, much better than what they came to find. They were looking in the wrong place for the risen savior. He was not among the dead, he was now living. In this verse, it says, the angels said to the women, remember, remember what he told you? How easy it is for us to forget. Uh, I think that's one of the things that, you know, at least I find I'm constantly forgetting things. Maybe that's uh, one of the reasons why God gave us his word. Repeated. Many times, Jesus repeatedly, he told his disciples that he was going to die. Uh, he told them that he would rise again. He told them that he would rise three days after his death. And here are some passages of scripture that indicate that. In uh, Matthew chapter 17, verses 22 and 23, it talks about that. In Mark 9.31, Jesus stated that again. And in, uh, also in Luke 9.22, he told the disciples he was going to die, but then he'd be raised again. After his resurrection, and he was talking with the disciples in Luke 24.44, he said to them, uh, this is what I told you while I was with, still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. So Jesus had told them, they just didn't remember it. Verse 7, in this uh, section of our lesson, we read, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day raised again. The angels reminded the women uh, that Jesus had told them he was going to be crucified and raised again. This was also Old Testament prophecy. It had been predicted that this was going to happen. And so the disciples and these women should have known even from that. And yet they did not. They had forgotten about this promise from Jesus. That brings us to the third section of our lesson. The third part is report, Luke 24, verses 8 through 12. Verse 8, we read, Then they remembered his words. The women remembered when the angels told them that. They remembered what Jesus had said. This little reminder kind of jogged their memories. So they, thinking back about how Jesus had taught them and talked with them so much, he had told them these things were going to happen. How often we forget God's word as well. That's why it's so important for us to daily read our Bibles. It helps us to remember maybe the things we previously knew and have forgotten, as well as learning new things. Uh, we go to Sunday school and have Bible studies and we attend church and we hear the Bible preached and taught, and that helps us to remember the things that maybe we learned before but have forgotten, as well as learning new things. We cannot live obediently to the Bible if we've forgotten it, if we don't know it. Uh, if we don't know the Bible, how can we apply it in our lives? Or if we've forgotten it, it's pretty hard for us to be living according to the word. We need constant reminders to help keep us sharp, remembering the word of God so we can live by it. Verse 9, we read, When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. So the women come back, they report to the eleven disciples. Remember, now Judas is gone. He has hung himself. So now they're just the eleven disciples. And they come back and report these things to the disciples. They were excited to share what they now understood from Jesus' teaching. 
They had forgotten it. Now they're coming back to share with the disciples these things that they've their memories have been jogged and they've been reminded of these things. Sounds like there may have been quite a large group of them together. You know, you have the 11 disciples and, and there were other, the women there, and there were other followers of Jesus. It sounds like they were quite a large group, maybe had been gathered together. Uh, I suspect they may have been hiding in fear. I mean, they're, after all, their leader has been crucified and uh, maybe they were fearing for their lives as well. If they were secluded together, it brings up the question to me, why didn't the men go out there and help the ladies when they needed help to roll away the stone? And if they were carrying these spices, and I don't know how much spices they had, but we uh, mentioned earlier there in John, it talks about Nicodemus bringing 75 pounds of spices and yet the disciples aren't there to help the women with any of those things. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other uh, with, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. Now the ladies that have gone to the tomb are named. First we have Mary Magdalene. She was a a familiar follower of Jesus. Uh, Jesus had cast out demons and transformed her life. Uh, there was Joanna. She was the wife of, she was a, the steward of Herod Antipas who helped, uh, she helped support Jesus from her own funds. We read about that in Luke chapter eight, verse three. Uh, there was Mary, the mother of James, the lesser, or James, the younger. He's also called James, the son of Alphaeus. And we read about him in Matthew 28, verse 1, um, that she was one of the ladies that was there. Mark 16 uh, identifies another one of these others uh, as Salome, the wife of Zebedee, who was also the mother of James and John. Remember, the, James and John were the uh, sons of Zebedee. And so she was there, and there were others there. Uh, we don't know how many others, but there were others that were present. And they come back to report to the disciples and tell them about what has happened. In uh, verse 11 and 12, we read, but they did not believe the women, that is the disciples, they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen laying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. These men didn't believe the women when they came and told about what had happened. I guess they didn't expect Christ's resurrection. It seemed impossible. Their leader had been killed. They actually witnessed it. They saw it happen. And now to say he's alive and risen, maybe it was, maybe they were just too absorbed with their own grief uh, to be able to really fathom what was going on. Now it says in this verse that Peter goes to the tomb to check it out. Now we have a parallel story to this in John chapter 10. John ran with him to the tomb. You remember the two ran together and John beats Peter. He gets there first. But Peter is the one that goes in and he's amazed at what he sees. Uh, there laying in the tomb are these strips of linen that had been used to wrap the body of Jesus. And he's wondering what had happened. Does the resurrection of Jesus cause you to wonder? Jesus, our Savior, is alive. He's alive today. We don't serve a dead God. We have a live Savior. By faith, we have to accept that. God's approval is shown in 
the resurrection of Jesus, the approval of his death, that it was sufficient for our salvation. Sin's penalty has been paid in full. That's God's gift to humanity. The question is, have you received God's gift of salvation? If not, I encourage you to do so today. Let's pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the resurrection of Jesus that gives us hope of a resurrection one day, gives us hope in our salvation. Thank you for a living Savior. Thank you that he is alive. Thank you we can celebrate his resurrection today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Have a wonderful day and week ahead.